Good morning. Good morning. So glad to see everyone here today. And what a wonderful sight this is, the entire family coming to celebrate baptism, which we will be doing here in the first service. We have a, another one in the second service, too. So what a great day this is. Glad to have all of you here. Those of you joining us online, we're glad you can be here as well. Let's rise and greet those around us with the peace of Christ. <laughs> Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. If the congregation will turn to page 268 in the hymnals to follow along with the rite of holy baptism. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sins of the world that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And how is this child named? Gentry August Noack, receive the sign of the cross upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. <coughs> Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Gentry according to your boundless mercy and bless her with true faith by the Holy Spirit, 
that through this saving flood all sin in her which has been inherited from Adam, and which she herself committed since, would be drowned and die. Grant that she be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers, and always serving your name with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, she would be declared worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Sponsors. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. I ask you, is it your intention to serve gentry as sponsors in the Christian faith? Yes, with the help of God. God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work, and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on heaven as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I ask the congregation and the sponsors to answer the following questions on Gentry's behalf. Gentry, do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce him. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Yes, I believe. Gentry, do you desire to be baptized? Yes, I do. I didn't even bring her forward. Gentry, August Noah, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you in his grace to life everlasting. Amen. All right, and if y'all will follow me over here, sponsors, if I can just have you line up right over here. I'm going to light this candle. And I can either give it to you or give it to one of the sponsors. Okay, I'll give it to one of them in just a minute. Uh, and you guys have been through this before, and so you know that this is a special day in Gentry's life. And we ask that on this day you remind her of how important it is that you celebrate with her. Give her some cake, give her a present, and uh, sing some hymns, say a prayer with her. Uh, let her know just how special this is. So who can I give this to? 
receive this light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which shall have no end. Gentry, in holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our sister in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you have graciously, that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Gentry the new birth and holy baptism and made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as she now becomes your child, you would keep her in this baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure she may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And if you all come forward, we will introduce her to the congregation. Let's welcome our sister in Christ, Gentry August Nowak. Welcome to the family, little sister. You can go have a seat. Please rise as you're able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We recite the Ten Commandments together. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. 
you shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant, or maidservant, his ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. We take a moment to reflect on these Ten Commandments, our inability to keep them, and our need for the forgiveness offered by Jesus Christ. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Light dawns in the darkness for the upright. He is gracious, merciful, and righteous. It is well with the man who deals generously and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. For the righteous will never be moved. He will be remembered forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen.
Please rise as you're able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, whose grace always precedes and follows us, help us to forsake all trust in earthly gain and to find in you our heavenly treasure. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. It is time for the memory verse for October. Let's recite it together. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Matthew 20, 28. Ms. Katie with the announcement. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, announcements this week. Uh, a couple things coming up in particular this week. Um, first of all, tomorrow and Tuesday is the Texas District All Church Workers Conference, which means that both pastors and I and our school staff will all be off of campus for that time. Um, so we will not be here. What that also means is that tomorrow's morning Bible study, the Monday morning Bible study, will not be meeting um, this week. That is canceled for tomorrow. Um, we will be back, though, for Tuesday night, which uh, for the special called Voters Meeting. Just a reminder to please plan to join us for that. Uh, these are additional proposed constitutional changes um, that we'll be voting on uh, at 7 p.m. here in the Fellowship Hall on Tuesday. Um, of course, coming up in uh, a couple weeks from now, we have our Reformation Sunday and uh, Ring the Bell celebration event. Um, so one service on October 27th at 9.30. Um, rather than have the meal after the service like we have done, um, traditionally we'll have that meal in the evening when it's getting close to dark so that then we can uh, relight our bell tower and see um, that uh, restored. Um, and just celebrate this big project that we've had going on for such a long time. Um, and then later that week, of course, is Trunk or Treat on the 31st from 6 to 8. Um, lots of opportunities to volunteer, lots of space still to do a trunk if you're considering uh, doing one of those. Um, and um, other needs um, that we have. So if you uh, can assist with that in any way or are curious about how you might be able to assist, please reach out to me and let me know. Um, and I will be happy to talk with you about that. Um, there's a lot more in here about things coming up in the community um, and other churches in the area, other things that we have going on here, collections, fundraisers, etc. So please make sure you have one of these before you leave today so that you have all that information. And we'll continue our service with our offerings.
pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty and everlasting God, look with compassion on your church. Protect your children from an evil, unbelieving heart that would lead us away from you into the deceitfulness of sin. By your Spirit's power, enable us to hold our original confidence firm to the end. We pray especially for all your children at Family of Faith Preschool in Houston, Texas, Soul Thirst Church in the Colony, Texas, and Christ Lutheran Church in Oil City, Pennsylvania. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O Lord, God of hosts, keep us from hating those you send to reprove us with your law. Do not let us abhor those who speak your truth to us, that we might repent and live. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, your Son warns us against the danger of trusting in wealth and earthly goods. Give us hearts that are content with his promises and hands that are generous with our worldly possessions. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Almighty God, in kindness, remember the President of our country, our Congress and justices, and all who bear office in this land. Protect them from the temptations of power and wealth that would lead them away from their calling. Make their service a blessing to our land and its people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our O oh Lord, have pity on Evan Fick, Judy Bias, Daryl Gersh, Grayson Mercyofsky, Henry Urban, Albert Mariets, the family of Mary Lou Geiki, and all your servants afflicted in body and soul. We also pray for all those affected by Hurricanes Helene and Milton. Give them peace and strength to meet the challenges ahead, especially those who have lost homes and those who have lost their loved ones. We also pray for all who have suffered or are currently suffering with cancer and pray that in your providence you would put an end to this disease. Satisfy all these, all these requests with your steadfast love in Christ, and grant us health and healing in accord with your perfect will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Creator of heaven and earth, by your word you send forth rain and snow to make the world bring forth and sprout. Give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Provide us rain, seasonable weather, and bountiful harvest that we may enjoy daily bread and praise your name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Holy God, we thank you for all whose lives are a blessing to us and praise you with all who mark special occasions in your grace, especially Gentry August Noah and Joaquin Jaden Knight at their baptism into Christ, and with Colby Muniz, Penny Shimon, and Grace Zwerneman at their birthdays. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, we ask that you continue to bless the mission and ministry of Emmanuel Lutheran Church School and ECC, and look with favor on our Train Up a Child program, that all things would be done according to your good and gracious will. Grant us humble hearts, knowing that apart from you, no good deed is done. We also give you thanks and praise for all the workers of your church, and ask that you would continue to provide workers for your harvest. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks to you, O Lord, for the faithful of every time and place who heard your word and held their confidence firm to the end. Keep us steadfast in that faith, that we may have our share with them in the eternal inheritance that you have promised. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> the Old Testament reading is from Amos, the fifth chapter. <coughs> Seek the Lord and live lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph and devour it with none to quench it for Bethel. O you who turn justice to wormwood and cast down righteousness to the earth, 
They hate him who reproves in the gate, and they abhor him who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and you exact taxes of grain from him, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not dwell in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe, and turn aside the needy in the gate. Therefore, he who is prudent will keep silence in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Hebrews, the third chapter. Take care, brothers, lest there be, any, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. As it is said, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who were those who heard and yet rebelled? Was it not all those who left, who left Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he provoked for forty years? Was it not those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient? So see that they were unable to enter because of unbelief. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you are able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your mother and father. And he said to him, Teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go, sell all you have and give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Come up and join me for a children's message. You can come on up. Guys, there's lots of room. Come on up. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, the message in our readings today is kind of simple for us. Right? It talks about sinfulness in our hearts and the goodness of God. It talks about the things that we're supposed to do and things that we're not supposed to do. So our message today is going to be pretty easy, um, but we're going to talk about the way that it came out in our gospel reading. Our gospel reading um, had uh, a man come up to Jesus and he said, what do I need to do to, um, to have eternal life with you? What do, what do, what do I have to do? Um, and Jesus says to him, he says, well, you know the commandments, the Ten Commandments that we say in church every week. You know what it says to do. So, um, 
And the guy says, okay, well, I've done all that, so I must be good. And Jesus says, actually, there's, you, you are lacking. He says, go and sell everything that you have and give it to the poor. And the man goes away really upset about this. He says, I don't think... He, he goes away upset because in his mind now, either he's not going to have eternal life, or why else do you think he might be upset? If Jesus says, the thing that you're missing is to, to sell all your possessions and give, take care of the poor, the people who need help. I know she's not in her normal spot today, is she? <laughs> Mom, where are you? She's over there. Over there. She's coming. Look, right there. Oh, um, <laughs> you're good. Um, the man goes away upset because either he's not going to have um, eternal life with Jesus or he has to give away everything that he has. <coughs> Why would he be so upset? This gives us a little hint about this guy. That what he has, what he owns, what he has earned for himself is very important to him. And to give all of that away, that feels impossible to him. That feels like that's the thing that's going to keep him out of heaven. Because these things are so important to him that he can't give them away. Which shows that he's maybe not keeping the commandments because what is the first commandment? Does anybody up here know what commandment number one is? Anybody remember? The very first one is you shall have no other gods, which means you shouldn't put anything over your relationship with God. That God comes first. He comes before your family, before your <coughs> friends, before your job, before the things that you have. God comes first. And so we get a little, uh, a little secret uh, <coughs> look at this man who comes to Jesus and we see that he is not putting God first because he wants to know what he has to do and then he doesn't feel like he can do it. Jesus may have said something different to us, right? He may have said, um, you're lacking this one thing. Uh, go fix your family, fix your relationships with your family. Go fix your relationships with your friends. We don't know each other's sins. We don't know what, what all of us are doing. But we do know that each of us has something that we sometimes allow to become more important to us than God. And so that's what Jesus would say to us. This is what you need to fix. But all of that aside, there's a problem with the guy's question, isn't there? He says, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? Who inherited eternal life for us? Jesus did that, right? Jesus did that part. Jesus did the eternal life part for us. So for us, what each of us has to do, no matter what our sins are, what, what we have to do is just recognize that we're sinners and that God loved us so much that he was willing to save us from that sin. And then when we, when we recognize that, when we know that, when we believe that, that we don't do the things that we're supposed to do, but that Jesus saved us from that, then we start to change the way that we live and that we act. That helps us to keep all those commandments, to put God first, to do the things that we're supposed to do when we know how much he loves us and what he did for us. All right? Let's fold our hands, say a quick prayer, repeat after me. Dear God, I'm sorry 
for the times when I do the things you ask me not to. Thank you for sending Jesus to take my sins away and help me to believe that so that I can live the way you ask me to. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up this morning. You guys can go back to your seats. Amen. Uh, our, our message this morning comes from our gospel reading, and I'll invite you to pray with me. I'm going to pray that first verse of the hymn that we just sang. Let us pray. Forgive us, Lord, for shallow thankfulness, for dull content with warmth and sheltered care, for songs of praise, for food and harvest press, while of your richer gifts we're unaware. Amen. Uh, our gospel reading today, as, as you heard Miss Katie talking about, it is this story. It's pretty, it is honestly pretty straightforward, as she mentions. And uh, Jesus, uh, the title for it is with this, with you lack one thing, comes from Jesus' words to this rich young man. Here's a, here's a painting uh, of it that, uh, and the story actually uh, is across several of the different gospel readings. I think Matthew, Mark, and Luke in particular have this story. And it starts with 
Uh, a simple question from the young man. What must I do to inherit eternal life? We ask the same question today, or at least we think about it in the same way, I think. Uh, we, just, we might say the words a little differently. How do I get to how do I get to heaven? Now, maybe it's not even a question for some people. Maybe it's just a thought and expectation that I am going to get to heaven, right? And um, I mean, there, so there's the question, uh, what, what must I do? And, and Jesus gives a simple answer. You know how to get to heaven, he says, right? Uh, and he gives this list. Not too huge up there that you can read, but you understand and you know it. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He's telling him to follow the what? Follow the commandments. God has told you what you must do to get to heaven, right? And, and of course, the guy says what in return? No sweat. <laughs> I got that. That's easy. I've been doing that since I was a kid, Lord. I'm good. And I think if you were to ask most people today, how are you doing keeping the commandments? Are you going to be in heaven? The expectation is, yes, I'm good. I'm getting to heaven. I've been a pretty good person. Especially when you start comparing yourself to the world. I have to tell you that last night I ended up rewriting the sermon. I had started out with pictures of different people, right, that we start comparing ourselves to so that when we ask this question, just among folks in general, including ourselves, especially when we start comparing ourselves, we think, I've done pretty good. You can think of some pretty awful people throughout history, and you go, oh yeah, that, that guy, not getting in. Me, I, I haven't been as bad as that person. And then I picked some pretty awful people, Hitler, I picked Charles Manson. I even started picking people that, depending on which side of the aisle you're on, you would label as pretty awful people. Right? So I had some pretty prominent politicians on there. And again, depending on which side you go, oh no, that person's awful. I'm good, and that person, no way. Okay? We have this belief that things are good. I'm good. I've kept those. I've done all this, Lord. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him. And he said to him, you lack one thing. Go, sell all that you have, give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. I, I love in this phrase, the first part it says is, he looked at him, Jesus loved him. Jesus knew better. Jesus knows better as he looks at each of us. He knows better, and he says, you lack one thing. Right? Jesus looked, he loved, and he's going to show the lack. He's going to show this young man who thinks he's good. He's going to show him the one thing that he doesn't have. This young man's been looking in the wrong place. He looks at those commandments, right? He says, okay, God says to do these things. Well, I'm good. I've done all of that. Jesus is going to show him what he's missing. Perhaps show you what you're missing as you read these things. Now, I do think it's an interesting exchange, though, and I'll point this up here. So you lack something. So you're missing something. What does he tell him to do? He's missing something. The first thing he says is, give away. Well, wait a minute. If I'm missing something, why am I giving more things away? Get rid of everything you have. Give it to the poor. Then you're going to have treasure in heaven. That doesn't in our brain, doesn't seem to make sense. I don't think it makes sense, right? You lack something, so get rid of everything you have, and then you'll have something. It doesn't make sense, right? And he follows it up, or he ends with, come, follow me. What was he missing? If this is Jesus' response, you lack one thing, yep, you've done all that stuff since you were a child, good, but you're still missing something. Go ahead, give everything away, give it to the poor, and then come follow me, and then you'll have treasure in heaven. So that's the question, what was lacking? We look at this again, Jesus looked, said it, right, and he gives all these instructions. Who was he missing? He's missing, 
Here we go. What was lacking is dependence on Jesus. I want you to consider that as Jesus talks to this young man, this young man who's described as this rich young man, okay, he was used to being able to get what he wanted when he wanted. If he needed something, he could just do it. That describes 99% of us in the world today, in, or at least in this room, if there's something we want, for the most part, we can get it. Now, I know we might have a scale of things, and there's stuff that we want, but we don't really need, okay? Most of us do not lack or, or have a lack of anything. You, you turned on hot water today. You had lights in your house. You had air conditioning. You had a comfortable bed to sleep in. You're not going to be hungry today, considering most other people in the world, or, or that there are portions of the world where that's not the case for everybody. So we're all in this group together of the rich young man. We have no lack of anything. We're successful by much of the world's standards. Our own country is this very generous country that gives and gives and gives, and we live lives the same way. We in control of everything in our lives. I don't need anybody because I can take care of myself. I think that's most of us, right? What this man lacked, as Jesus says these things, it says he went away disheartened because he had everything. He didn't want to give away because if he gives everything away, what is he going to be? He's going to be dependent. I want you to have a contrast here. Notice the painter of this painting. He shows, look at the young man there, right? He's got this... I'm guessing for the day, a very fancy headdress or something, some sort of hat, right? Very fine clothes. And notice who Jesus is pointing to. That bottom left corner. Who's that? Just a poor person. A very dependent person. A person relying on that woman who's helping. A woman looking to Jesus there. And it's a stark contrast of the two people. You have the rich young man who has everything us, right? We have everything we need. Looking at the person who's completely dependent on what was the money, what does the young man lack? He lacks a dependence on God. And it's in the question, what must I do? Okay, you touch on this too, right? He's worried about what can I, what, what do I need to do to get to heaven? How am I going to get there? Well, I can do this, I can do this, and I can do this. And if he does everything, if you can do everything, then who don't you need? You don't need Jesus. Jesus invites him, get rid of everything you have and follow me. He invites him into this relationship, a dependence upon him, a dependence on Jesus. We do the same. We look at our lives and we say, I've done well. I'm going to get to heaven because I've been a good person. As opposed to understanding that you cannot do it. What must I do to inherit do you earn an inheritance? Inheritance is a what? For all intents and purposes, it's a gift. It's a gift given by, by another, by the one who does have. And so when Jesus says, come, follow me, he's inviting the young man to find eternal life there in following Jesus. It's not in the things that he can do. The young man can't do the things to get into heaven. He can't give away. There is something there. In this case, it's his wealth. But for each of us, and this is the warning in the text, there is something in your life. There's always something in our lives that we simply cannot give up. It's that repetitive sin in your life. It's the way you're thinking, the way you're acting. It's obvious, I, I always, I marvel at political seasons in our country and to see the dependence or the belief we have that, to use biblical language, princes of this world can lead to salvation or lead to the lives we need. And they're sinning, they have sin and they fail just as much as we do. Jesus' exhortation here, Jesus' warning to us is not to think it's within ourselves but to be wholly dependent on him. And today, I think we have an amazing example. We have a whole bunch of kids here today. And parents, I want to ask you, especially of our littlest one today, 
How dependent are the kids on their parents in their lives? On a scale of one to, a scale of one to 100, how dependent are they? 100 being the, the max. They're 100% dependent. That's Jesus' example for us. We, right, he says, become like a child, have the faith of a child, and the child is wholly dependent on Jesus or upon its parents. In the same way, we are wholly dependent on Jesus. We may think we can do it, and as the kids grow, they start to say that, no, I can do it by myself. Nope, I got it, right? And it's cute and funny when they do. But Jesus holds the child up not because there's some special qualities, but because they are wholly and fully dependent on parents, and we get that. You are wholly dependent upon Jesus for eternal life. That's his invitation today. And to let go of whatever it is that holds you back from trusting in him completely. May God strengthen your faith. May he open your eyes to see those things that prevent you from trusting and leaning on him completely. And may you rest in that mercy and grace and and the love that he has shown you. In Jesus' name, amen. And may the peace of God then which surpasses all understanding may keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus from now to life everlasting. Amen. Please rise. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace.